Prior to doing this video, I knew Marcus Lattimore's story. But after doing the research, kind of reconnecting with the story and, and digging back into it, I came away from it with some things that can help me in my everyday life. There's no doubt in my mind that it can do the same for anybody watching this video. Marcus Lattimore is an extremely talented football player. His career was essentially taken from him, really due to no fault of his own. Yet he never seemed to complain, he never seemed bitter, and he most definitely never gave up. He handled every test he was given with grace, class, dignity, respect, and honor. That's why today I am delighted to bring you a video on the one and only Marcus Lattimore. As you watch this video, man, make sure you leave with something. All right, and if you enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe for more of the same type of content. Also, a like rating and a share are always appreciated as that helps the channel continue to grow. Know the gang was good. Let's get it. Bye. Marcus Lattimore grew up in Duncan, South Carolina. He attended James Byrne High, where he became one of the most decorated players in South Carolina football history. As a junior, he was ESPN Rise National High School Player of the Year. That was back in 2008. As a senior, he was South Carolina's Mr. Football and played in the Army All-American game. Marcus decided to stay home and attend the University of South Carolina playing for Steve Spurrier and the Gamecocks from 2010 to 2012. Upon arriving on campus, Marcus wasted no time making an impact. In his second college game ever, he looked like Superman on his way to 182 yards and two touchdowns. He didn't do this versus some small school either. This was against SEC opponent Georgia Bulldog. Imagine a true freshman running back in his second game ever, breaking 42 tackles versus an SEC opponent. That thought seems ridiculous, but that's exactly what Marcus Lattimore did on that day. A few weeks later versus number one ranked Alabama, he ran for 93 yards and scored a total of three touchdowns. Some experts compared Lattimore to Adrian Peterson, who had one of the greatest freshman seasons of all time. But while Marcus had a great freshman campaign, it didn't quite stack up to AP's year. However, one category he definitely had AP beat in, he was much more of a threat catching the football out of the backfield. Marcus helped get the Gamecocks to the 2010 SEC Championship game. But Marcus was held to just 84 yards. They ran into a Cam Newton-led Auburn team who was on the way to win a national championship. It wasn't pretty. By the start of the fourth quarter, Auburn held a 28-point lead, effectively taking Marcus out of the game completely. South Carolina went on to lose that game, 56-14. The season, though, had been a good one for Marcus. He won NCAA Freshman of the Year. But during the Chick-fil-A Bowl, Marcus and the Gamecocks got a glimpse into the future as Marcus suffered a concussion after three receptions and only one carry. He was unable to continue the game. South Carolina would go on to lose that one. Marcus finished his freshman season with 1,197 yards and he averaged 4.8 yards per carry and scored 17 touchdowns but he was a complete back, adding in 29 receptions for another 412 yards and two more TDs. The following season, South Carolina raced to a 5-1 start and Marcus had opened the season on fire. First game of the year, he ran for 123 yards and three touchdowns. He followed it up with a 176 yard game, then a whopping 246 yard game. He was racking up yards and touchdowns and was surely on the way to an amazing season. But during the seventh game of the year versus Mississippi State, this happened. Cat formation, and there's number 21 over there blocking the perimeter. Yes, sir. And on a little wild cat 12 yard run, there's your knee. Yep. What's going through your mind here? That was tough. It hurt when it happened. I mean, so I knew something was wrong. He came over and told me. No, I had a torn ACL. Unfortunately, one of the players from Mississippi State misses the tackle on the ball carrier and falls into the side of Marcus's knee and tore a ligament. Marcus would miss the remainder of the 2011 season. Only playing half a season, Marcus would finish with 818 yards and 10 touchdowns. Clearly, he was on the way to doing something amazing. The next year, 2012, he rebounded, determined to come back even stronger. First week back, out the gates. 
put up 110 and a couple scores on his way to surpassing George Green's school record of 33 touchdowns. Marcus and South Carolina were riding high. After Marcus dropped another 100 plus yard game versus Georgia, South Carolina had won his 10th straight contest. But as it oftentimes seemed to do in Marcus's life when things were going great, tragedy soon would strike. On October 27th versus Tennessee, one of the most gruesome college football plays you'll ever see. If you're squeamish, look away from your screen. Lattimore wrapped up by Lathers and the ball came out. Marcus Lattimore holding his right knee. Marcus had torn every ligament in his right knee. It had basically exploded. He had suffered nerve damage and for an average man, his football career would be over, but not for Marcus. He got the surgery and rehabbed his way back onto the field, all while maintaining an amazing positive attitude that can inspire the most cynical person on the planet. Despite the injuries, Marcus was drafted in the fourth round of the 2013 draft by the 49ers. He received a four-year contract and also got a $300,000 signing bonus. He was placed on injured reserve with the hopes that he could return to his South Carolina form, but it didn't happen. On November 5, 2014, Marcus announced his retirement from the NFL. Here's a portion of Marcus's retirement statement. After prayer and careful consideration, I've decided it's time to end my professional career. I've given my heart and soul to the game that I love, and it's time for me to move to the next chapter of my life and help others. I've given every ounce of my energy toward making a full recovery from my knee injury, and I've made a lot of progress. Unfortunately, getting my knee fully back to the level the NFL demands has proven to be insurmountable. I'm grateful for the entire 49ers organization. Their decision to draft me was the realization of a lifelong dream to be an NFL player. Though I'm proud of what I've accomplished throughout my football career, I'm sincerely disappointed that it must end, but I trust that God has a great plan for my future. As for what's next, I'll be returning to the University of South Carolina to complete my degree. I can't say enough about the support from the Gamecock family since the first day I stepped on campus until now. I'm so proud to be a part of the University of South Carolina family, and I promise to always represent the Garnet and Black with honor and integrity. I'll also continue to work with my foundation, the Marcus Lattimore Foundation, it's called DREAM, to provide opportunities and platforms to benefit young sports programs in the state of South Carolina. I would not be here where I am today without the support of my family. I also appreciate the outpouring of support from friends, fans, opposing players, and strangers. Your support means more than you'll ever know. Later that year, he would be hired by his alma mater, South Carolina, to speak to players about life on and off the field. It was amazing to be honest. A guy that had been dealt such a terrible hand had somehow managed to come out pretty good. He would be able to earn a living based solely on his incredible resilience and positive attitude. But in April 2016, the NCAA indicated that the university would gain an unfair recruiting advantage by hiring Lattimore due to his work with high school kids through his foundation. It was a heavy blow. The Marcus Lattimore Foundation dreams addresses problems and issues within communities, towns, and cities in the state of South Carolina. They help prepare parents for the new NCAA scale in an effort to support academic counselors working with and advising their children. They teach values and core character guidelines and expectations for young men and women, creating stable foundations for their futures, which in turn will help build up South Carolina from the inside out. It creates a positive mindset, atmosphere, and outlook when challenges and adversity arise. Who better than Marcus to lead a foundation like this? When the NCAA came out and said that Marcus would be unable to work with South Carolina, he simply indicated that the NCAA ruling was fair and that he would not be joining South Carolina staff. On May 6, 2016, however, it was announced that Lattimore would be joining the football staff at Heathwood Hall Episcopal School in Columbia, South Carolina. Later that year in November, he was named head football coach. Depending on how you decide to look at Marcus's journey, you may see it as a great tragedy, but I'm a person that believes everything happens for a reason. And it seems that through his foundation and through his head coaching job, and just through his story in general, Marcus would be able to touch a lot more lives than he could as a great professional running back. Maybe his purpose was greater than just playing football. But that's just something to ponder on. Yeah.